Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek with an episode of Fly Fishing Untangled. Today, we have a little video and discuss with you about the fishing the barometer. All right, so there's thousands of different elements that anglers have to take into consideration when they're out on the water. Um, everything from stream flow to temperature to, um, you know, how hot it is that day. So what we want to talk about is the barometer, low pressure and high pressure systems. These really, really affect fish. Now, some of this will be scientific and some of this will be opinion, but uh, I've been on the water for decades now and uh, just through my observations, talking to people and paying attention to fish and fish patterns, this is kind of something that uh, I've developed to come up with. So uh, a lot of folks get out on the water and they say everything was just right, the water temperature was right, the weather was beautiful, but the fish just didn't want to eat. So what happens when these pressure systems move across the United States, low and high? One thing that most people know, particularly hunters, is all animals become more active on an approaching low pressure system. Okay, meaning the barometer is dropping, low pressure is approaching um, around here on the east coast. Uh, winds will start to come up out of the south or the southwest. Things will start to cloud up. And that is when most animals become very active. So deer will be eating, um, even livestock. You look out in the field, cattle will be eating like crazy. And the idea is this is mother nature's mechanism for letting those animals know that bad weather is coming. Okay. So they're going to try and put on some calories and eat. Now, this is even more important for fish in a fluid environment. As we know, fish, smallmouth bass, uh, trout, some of the things we like to fly fish for are visual feeders. They rely very heavily on seeing their food and then pursuing their food. They've got other things too. They can smell and they can sense movement through lateral line and, and, and other things. But seeing is really, really important for these fish. So when you live in a fluid environment like a river or a stream and weather comes, it can completely wreck that environment. Okay, It can, it can muddy the water um, to the point where they can't see at all. Um, debris can come down. It can push them off their feeding lies and force them into a sheltering lie uh, where they don't have to exert so much energy to hold in that in that place. And so for fish, particularly fish in a fluid environment, um, an approaching storm or approaching low pressure system can really, really mess up their ability to feed. Imagine if you're a small organism like a 10 inch trout and you live in a really large river and that river uh, after high water gets blown out and muddy for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, um, they're not going to be able to eat properly. And if for a small organism with a high metabolism, burning all those calories, that's that's a that's a problem. So Mother Nature has a fix to that problem. All animals can feel barometer change. That includes human beings too. Some of us can feel pressure change more than others. Certainly, some of my older customers will tell you they can tell when uh, low pressure is approaching. And this is the signal, this is the cue for these fish to eat and to eat hard. So in the summer months, when we've got a big front pushing through, those smallmouth will get out their forage, they'll swim farther, they'll work harder, they'll burn more calories because mother nature is telling them things could get nasty, things could get bad, you may not be able to feed properly, you may not be able to see. And then what ends up happening is this, let's say that front moves through, that low pressure moves through and it's a, it's a dry front, which happens all the time doesn't drop hardly any rain at all, doesn't affect water levels, doesn't affect clarity. Next day, winds are out of the northwest, things have cooled down, we can notice, hey, there's a big temperature change, humidity's lower, um, and what has happened is the fish have eaten so heavily on that day or two days approaching that low, with that approaching low, that they simply don't need to work hard, they've, they've got, uh, they're, they're full, they're satisfied. Um, We've all experienced these days, they happen quite a bit. It's uh, in the summer months, it's a relief from the heat. So as humans, we're like, oh, this is beautiful. The weather's nice and cool. We're not gonna get as hot, bluebird skies, humidity's down. This is gonna be such a nice day. A little too nice is what it is, okay? Um, so it doesn't mean you can't f catch fish on these days. Um, you know, uh, f fish, fish uh, are, they're all on different pages. Not all their body types are the same. They're not all on the same lies in the river, okay? So not all on the same page. However, it will tremendously hurt the, the fishing. It will be much, much slower. So 
um, maybe only 10% of the fish are willing to eat. And then of those, they may not be willing to chase. Uh, they may not be able to swim, swim as far. Um, you get a lot of softer eats, or what we call short strikes. The fish will come up and they just won't commit quite as hard, okay? Um, that is what it's like fishing under high pressure, all right? So it's not so much that they hate high pressure, it's that they ate so heavily prior to it. Should have been there yesterday. I've heard that before, okay? A lot of times that's the barometer that's doing that. Now, each day that we get beyond that frontal passage, typically the metabolism of the fish um, will start to work its way back up. Um, under normal weather cycles and patterns, sometimes you'll have a cold front move through, Fishing will be really, really slow. Fish will be stubborn, won't eat very well. Next day, bites a little bit better. Next day, it is improving. And then before you know it, the next front's coming and you're back on the front side or the right side of that, of that low pressure system, okay? So these are things to consider when you're going out fishing. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen often in the wintertime um, because quite often in the wintertime, the cold fronts are too cold, too nasty, too blustery to fish in, all right? Uh, as humans, we don't want to be out uh, when that cold front pushes through and the high temperature is only going to be 20 and the wind's ripping out of the northwest at 30 miles an hour. So oftentimes, just by picking the day we're most comfortable in the cooler months, we are in fact fishing just ahead of the low, which is where we want to be. Um, it's the summer months where oftentimes we get caught in these uh, high, high sky days, as we call them, okay? So the clouds have a lot to do with it as well. Clear skies, sunny skies, spookier fish. But that barometer, I guarantee you, is mother nature's signal for those fish to eat, just like the deer have to eat and everything else have to eat. So these are things that I want you to consider when you're looking ahead the next week or so and you're trying to plan your fishing day or your time on the water, time is precious. And um, consider that barometer, think about the barometer, and see if you can't find these same trends that we have. Thanks for watching.